Most recently, there's been a rise in COVID cases in New York City. Experts say the BA5 Omicron variant is spreading. Yeah, but Mayor Eric Adams has been talking about the city moving past COVID, lifting bans, and doing away with a COVID alert system. Take a listen. The color coded system was fighting an old war. And as COVID shifted, it became a new war. So we're not going to hold on to something that's an old weapon merely because we had it. No, we're going to create new weapons to fight this new war. Our next guest has different thoughts, though. Joining us is New York City public advocate Jumani Williams. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So the New York City Health Department has already removed the COVID alert system from its website. Why do you want to make sure that the COVID alert system actually stays in place? How long do you think we need to have it there? Well, one, I think is a mistake. So one, I, we do agree uh, that we have to learn to live with COVID. Uh, that doesn't mean we have to ignore COVID. And one of the problems we saw throughout uh, the worst of it was a lack of communication. And so I will agree if the system we have is outdated, we should update it. Uh, but it doesn't mean you get rid of one before you have another. We have to have a way to be able to communicate with New Yorkers who are, are scared when they see numbers rising, not necessarily understanding uh, what those numbers mean. But also, if we have it, we should use it, which is something that we also had a problem with early on. Yeah, and like you said, the mayor says more than once, has said more than once, that the city needs to move on. So what do you think is the middle ground where you can come to an well, agreement? Well, one... Having a threat level system doesn't mean you're not moving on. It just alerts people what's going on so they can themselves can feel comfortable uh, because you do want to have some comfort and understanding that we're going to be with COVID for a very long time. We don't want to see huge shutdowns. I also agree just seeing a spike does not necessitate uh, something is necessarily wrong. And there are some no other numbers like deaths and hospitalizations that you have to look at. We also want to see a hybrid model come into place. This is something we've been pushing for a very long time. Uh, there seems to be a lot of resistance in the city and the state. My office is now remote because of the spike. We will be returning to hybrid. It's good because of the health of the city. It's good for mental health and uh, family life balance. It's also good for retention. We're losing a lot of city workers, many of whom who are demanding remote options and are getting it in other places. And I'm glad you brought up the, the, the hybrid option. Since the pandemic, a lot of people had been doing the work from home model, right? But the, the mayor and also big businesses, big employers here in New York City have really been pulling employees back into the office, demanding them to do at least some in-person time, if not all. They've got big rents, big physical footprints. Whose interests do you think are being served when they say, we want you to come back? And I mean, we're talking about restaurants and small businesses and all of the spillover effect as well. Well, we want to look at everybody's interests. What we do know is the insistence uh, to do five days a week, eight hours a day, Workers know that that is not something that they have to do anymore, and they're finding other places that will give them a remote option. Uh, the hybrid model is the best of all worlds. I do think having people come back and forth and commuting is important. I also think that work-life balance is important. We learned about that balance during this pandemic. And city workers, we counted them. They delivered during this pandemic. They deserve to have the type of remote option that they're seeing people have in private sectors. We want businesses to succeed, and we want employees to succeed. That's why we think the hybrid model is a place that we should be leading on, uh, not being last on. And some of the private businesses themselves are understanding they don't want to lose workers to people who have a remote option. The city should look at it the same way. Yeah, well, we only have a limited time with you this morning, so we want to switch gears and talk about the crime that we've been seeing here in the city. It went up 30% last month in New York City in comparison to June of 2021. And gun violence, I mean, we, it's shootings every day. It's, it's commonplace. So where do you think the pressure needs to be, the pressure for change? Well, we, we're all happy to see a, a small dip in gun violence. Hopefully uh, that continues. We do have to make sure we're looking at this in context uh, the entire country. Of course, that means absolutely nothing if you're a New Yorker. Interestingly enough, uh, a recent survey uh, that asked uh, New Yorkers what we can do to help with safety, the top two things were actually housing and mental health. The third was policing. What we've seen so far is more specifics on the policing issues and not as much on the other two issues that people think are going to help with, with public safety. The one thing we have to do if we want to support particularly our law enforcement 
and stop asking them to do the job of so many others. Uh, and that means we have to fund agencies correctly and we have to fund uh, community groups that are doing this work. And I'm not sure if we've seen that happen so far. We need to lead here because people have a right to be safe and feel safe. Uh, there is a right to be concerned, uh, but we have to have some clear messaging about what we're doing and set some real benchmarks about how we're gonna do it and have specifics in areas that we just haven't seen yet. I, I think we've dug into a lot of topics this morning. Safety, of course, is so top of mind. We wanna to continue to see that. We've got everybody talking about it. Police Commissioner Keyshawn Sewell saying she's talking to DAs of all five boroughs every single day and trying to end this revolving door of Justice Jumani Williams talking about safety, return to work. We so appreciate you being with us this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much.